Let's all stand as we honor God's word by standing. First Kings. I'm going to begin reading in the 15th verse of 1 Kings 21. I'm going to begin reading in the 15th verse. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Romoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Am I reading? I'm reading 1 Kings 22, aren't I? I'm sorry. I turned two pages instead of one. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass that when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the, pow in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick the the blood even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that, uh, I'm not going to use that word, but wetteth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left Israel, and will maketh thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabar, and like the house of Bashashia, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, of the, in the, city the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. Behold, there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. And he did very abomination in the following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, and when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. 
but in his son's days, I bring the evil upon his house. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for the blessings of it, Lord. I'm just so thankful that you take care of us each and every day. And Lord, I can, uh, I can imagine that after going to see Brother Buddy and Miss Gussie yesterday that we can find ourselves in a difficult place, difficult situation. And Lord, I pray that you will take care of that situation. Lord, it's really more than most people can even fathom. Lord, I pray that you'll do whatever it is that you need to do to take care of it. And Lord, I just pray that as we look into the last of the life of, of Elijah and the last of the life of Ahab and his wicked wife, Lord, help us to realize that uh, we can come to this end also if we're not careful. Lord, go with us and take care of us, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. <clears throat> Faithful Elijah, and the second part of this message is the death of a king and his wife. Now, the death of his king and his wife won't come this afternoon, but this is all one message. <clears throat> Elijah, the chosen prophet of Jehovah God, was given one last call from God to go and face Ahab, the king of Israel. Now, when we talk about faithful Elijah, yeah, we know we know if you, if you heard the other messages we had that Elijah came to this part in up in his life to where that. He just did not want to do what God would have him do, but he did it because God told him to. And this is one of the, one of the last uh, call that God had for him. It says, we know, now we know that if sinless angels fail through the sin of ambition, how can a sinful king hope to succeed by sinning? How can any of us hope to succeed by sinning? We can't do it. We may think we can. We may think that we can get by, but we can't succeed by sinning. You just can't do it. You know, we, I've said it many times before that, yes, we're still sinners, but we don't have to prove it. We don't have to prove it. We don't have to just take it on ourselves to make a decision on ourselves as to what we're going to do and what we are not going to do. We, we need to always realize that. Let me go a little further and say, how can any of us who belong to the Lord expect to succeed by sinning against the Lord who loves us and gave his own life to save us? How can we ever expect to succeed in this world? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm succeeding in this world. No, you're just living. You're just existing. That's all you're doing. You're just existing in this world. You know, uh, uh, what, what do we mean by succeeding? What, what do we mean? What do, what, what do we mean by getting things that we need? What do we, what do we mean by all that? Succeeding. Well, there's no way, there's no way that and I'm going to prove to you, probably be this afternoon, but I'm going to prove to you that that's not so. You can't succeed if you, if you think that you can sin against God and go ahead, get by with it. You haven't gotten by with it, and you haven't succeeded, and you're going to find out someday why you haven't succeeded in this world, just like Ahab did. And I want you, I'm going I'm to say this one thing, just in case some of you decide that you don't think you have to come back this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to say one thing to you. 
Ahab did repent. I know someone said before that how could, how could you say Ahab was a saved person, but he did repent, and the Lord did forgive him. We read that in the verses uh, 28 and 29, when the Lord said, I won't hold this against him, but I will tell you, who did he say? He said, but I will hold it against his children and their children. Now, this, this is where we are. This is where we are today. You know, we, we live in a day when, quote, unquote, Christians just think that they can do anything they please. They think they can join any kind of group they want to join. They think they can try to keep up with anybody they want to keep up with. But this, this is where we come to. We wonder sometimes why our children turn out the way they do. We wonder sometimes why that our children's children may turn out the way they do, which would be my grandchildren. Why sometimes they turn out the way they do. We may wonder that. We may wonder these things. You know, let me tell you, folks, we, we're, we're pretty sure about God being in control of everything. So we have to realize that God is also in control of this too. But we'll get into this more this afternoon when we get into the part where the death of a king and his wicked wife. <clears throat> the scheming Jezebel had brought the honest Naboth or had the honest, let me say this, had, had, had the honest Naboth stoned to death, so as King Ahab can now claim the vineyard which Naboth had previously sold Ahab by telling Ahab, the vineyard doesn't belong to me. Ahab said, you sell it to me. He said, it doesn't belong to me. Ahab said, who does it belong to? He said, it belongs to God. Now, Naboth, maybe, maybe we should say something about faithful Naboth. Naboth recognized that he did not own a thing. He did not, they, there was nothing he owned. Everything that he had belonged to God. And do, do we recognize those things today? Naboth was one, but so Jezebel said, well, said, the only way we're going to get it is that Naboth dies. She said, Ahab wants it, and I'm going to get it for him. So she had Naboth stoned to death. And as a result of that, um, Ahab came in possession of the vineyard. The ambition of Ahab claimed Naboth's inheritance after he was stoned at the authority of his wicked wife. We all know the greed of gain has brought a lot of people to perform deeds of the dark side of life. Greed. Greed is, is, is one thing that has brought a lot of people down in this life. They have, they want more. They have, they want more. They go, they want to go more. They go, they want to go more. Greed has brought them down. What, what is mine is mine, and you're not going to get it. What is mine is mine, and no one is going to tell me how I'm going to use it. Well, that's, uh, that's the very thing that brought, brings a lot of people to the dark side of life. When we try to sit back and we try to realize, I remember a preacher one time preached many years ago. He, was, he had counseled a couple that their children had just gone wild. And they said, uh, 
we've been good parents. So we've tried to be the best of parents. And he looked at them and he said, have you? Have you really? Have you really tried to be the best of parents? <laughs> Let me tell you, God had already told Ahab, yeah, Ahab repented. I believe Ahab was a saved man because God let him repent of his sin. God said, I'm not going to hold this against him, but I am going to hold it against his children and his children to come. We wonder why. The nursing of a beautiful serpent will send its poisonous fangs into the soul of those who choose to let it nurse. Eve could not resist the beauty of the serpent. She could not resist it. Eve knew, Eve knew that she only had one commandment. One commandment that she had to keep. Now we've got thousands of them in the scriptures. But she only had one commandment she had to keep. And that was not to eat of that tree that was in the middle of the garden. But yet, through the nursing of the devil, through her nursing the devil, that day caused her to do the very thing that God told him not to. And so as a result of it, she deliberately listened to the devil and she ate of that tree. Where are we today? Where was it in Elijah's day? Where was it in Elijah's day, you know? Eli evidently, Elijah either loved Jezebel... Or his other way around, Jezebel loved Ahab. I'm talking about it, not Elijah, but Ahab. Which, which, whichever it was, you know, he tolerated what she did and the things she did. And he went and he, just because she told him he could get it, now he went and got it. But then one day he had to realize He had to repent of that sin, had to confess it and repent of it. The seeming success came when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead and he rose up to take possession of his vineyard. He never thought nothing about what Ahab had said to him. I mean, what Naboth had said to him. Naboth said, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. I can't sell. I can't sell something that belongs to the Lord. Well, let me tell you, folks, everything we have belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to us. Nothing belongs to us. It all belongs to the Lord. All the Lord asks of us is that we will give him back a tenth of it. And thereby he is satisfied with us giving him back a tenth of it. But sometimes that can't, that's not done either. Everything we have belongs to the Lord. We, we own nothing. We have nothing. As Job said, Job said, I came into this world with nothing. And he says, I'm willing to leave this world with nothing. But Nabal completely forgot about it. And as soon as, they, as soon as Jezreel, Jezebel said, honey, come on over here. I want to show you. Uh, Naboth's dead and said, you can go get that vineyard. He took off. Man, he wanted that vineyard. He took off and he took possession of that vineyard. He stole it. He stole it. He stole it from whom? 
stole it from God because God, God, it belonged to the Lord. Naboth had already told him it belongs to the Lord. He stole it from God, you know. How, how in the world do we expect to get by if we steal from God? You know, Bob, uh, the Bible plainly says, you know, that the children of Israel says, where have we failed? What have we done? And they, he said, you robbed God. Well, how have we robbed God? We robbed God of our tithes and our offerings. Again, you know, God robbers. God robbers will never go to heaven if they can't repent of their sin, and God won't let them repent of it. They're not going, but they're not going. It is amazing. But Ahab did not care how Naboth died, but that he was dead. In Ahab's mind, it was get it any way I can, it can be gotten, even if it means by hook or crook. Get it any way I can. That was the attitude of this man of God. Ahab was a man of God. He was one God chose to, to, to sit, sit over Israel. But he, he was one that, he said, I'm going to get it any way I can. The Lord's call to Elijah came and he said to Elijah, Behold, Ahab is gone down to possess the vineyard of Nabal. See, Elijah knew about this situation. The Lord told him, said, He's gone down to get that vineyard. And he says, I want you to go down there. I want you to go down there and I want you to speak to him, tell him what he's doing is wrong. I don't know how much Elijah knew about the scheme of Jezebel and Ahab, but I, know, I, I do know there is nothing that, can, that takes place that the Lord doesn't know about it. I don't know how much Elijah knew about all that, but evidently the Lord had given him a quick lesson. He said, you need to go down there. Well, he took, he went to possess that vineyard that after his wife killed a, the owner of it, a quote, quote, unquote. But God is not in the thoughts of sinning men and women. Let me say that again. God is not in the thoughts of sinning men and women. They may think, they may think, well, oh, I can, I can do this and, and, and still love the Lord. God's not in their thoughts. Just like we were talking about godly fear, you know. How many people come to God's house because they fear the Lord? But how many come to God's house because they love the Lord? Don't raise your hands, but how many of you here today are here because you love the Lord? Well, if that's the case, then you're going to run to the God's house next week. You're going to run to God's house the next week, and then God the next week, and the next week, if you're here because you love the Lord. Because to love the Lord means that you're going to serve him. That's one thing that, uh, uh, that was I, I brought out in... Sunday school this morning. One thing I brought out in Sunday school this morning is, is not only are we to do what God told us to do, but we're to keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. This is the Lord's Sabbath we're experiencing right now. This is the Lord's Sabbath. Sunday is the Lord's Sabbath. Saturday was Jehovah God's Sabbath and the, and the Israelite Sabbath. But our Sabbath is today. He said, keep it holy. Keep it holy. Now, that's hard to do. 
Sinners don't think about that. Sinning men and women don't think about that. Such may succeed for a time as Ahab and Jezebel and the schemers of the Tower of Babel, but in the end, all men's schemes must pass the test of a thrice holy God. Those people at the Tower of Babel, they schemed together. They got together in, in, in a group. It happens, still happens today. They got together in a group and they decided this is what they're going to do. And they go and do it. It was the great Apostle Paul who told the Corinthian church, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work as to what sort it is. Just like it did Ahab. Elijah was not given a reason for meeting Ahab but was given a stern commandment from God. He said in verses 17 through 19, God told him, said, uh, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, the king of Israel, which is in, the, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Nabal, whither he is gone down to possess. Possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick the blood of even thine. He gave him that message. This was a terrible call Elijah got from God. Elijah, as all of us know, God is a loving God. Yes, he is. But while he is keeping mercy for multitudes, will by no means clear the guilty sinner. Won't clear the guilty sinner just because God shows mercy to multitudes. I had a question to some folks that was giving me some trouble here last week. This time of year, I despise it. I can't help it. I despise it. And, uh, but this is time of year when people, people don't even know me they get on me because of this time of year. It's like some of them got on me. I said, what do you know about this time of year? Well, I know a lot about it. I said, then you know that uh, it's not taught in the Bible. No, I didn't know it wasn't taught in the Bible, but it's not. They hated me even more because I told them that. It's not taught in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about this time of year. Yes, there is in Jeremiah the 10th chapter when he said, don't do as the heathen do, go out and cut a tree off, bring it into the house, nail it, put a stand on it, put lights on it, and worship it. But I, I'm going to say he's not talking about Christmas time there. He's talking about pagan worship. That's what, that's what those 850 prophets of Jezebel did. They did that. They, they, were, they, were, they were also the prophets of the grove. And they would go out and they would decorate the grove with lights and trees. And they'd get under those trees and they would, they would sing their... their uh, uh, um, chants 
to those trees as they lit them up. Elijah, like many, would, would do, would not tone down the message. He said, it's thus saith the Lord. Oh, it's easy to tone down the message. Don't you, don't you go and see your family this time of year? Don't you, don't you celebrate this with your family? Well, you think you, you're doing your family wrong by not doing that. Elijah went to Ahab and he said, thus saith the Lord. This is what the Lord says about it. But the sin in Ahab never had the Lord in his mind at this time. Elijah would not tone down his message, but it would have proven him, if he had it, it would have proven him not being faithful. We wouldn't be preaching about faithful Elijah today if he'd have toned down that message. This is a bad message to take to someone, tell them they're going to die. You know, doctors don't like to do it. Family members don't like to do it. Nobody likes to go and tell somebody that they're going to die. But that's what Elijah had to do. Elijah had to go to Ahab and tell him because of what he has done, he is going to die. He wouldn't have been faithful. Turn with Acts the 20th chapter, if you would. I'm going to close here in just a minute. Acts the 20th chapter. And I want to read to you, begin in verse 20, what was said there. Acts the 20th chapter in verse 20 says, and, and how I kept back nothing. Paul speaking here, as I kept back nothing that was profitable. No, not Paul speaking, but Peter. And hath I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith and toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing what shall befall me. This is Paul speaking. Save that the Holy Ghost witness it in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abate me. Why? But for doing right. He said, I know that. He said, when I go to Jerusalem, I know it's not, not going to be good. In other words, Paul didn't tone down his message just because he knew there was going to be no good coming out of it. But we have a thing today where we want to tone everything down. That's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. You just go, you just, just do it. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Old brother Paul won't, won't, hear, won't hear of it, won't find out about it. Faithfulness is what God expects from every one of his children. He expects faithfulness. We're going to stop off right there, and we're going to pick up the rest of it when we get back. Let's be dismissed this time, be back at 10 after, and uh, let's all stand if you would. And uh, I'm going to ask.